Hi everybody, my name is Andre. Welcome back to Med School EU. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about solutions and uh, more specifically, we're actually going to discuss solvent properties of water and solubility. First, let's talk about what a solution is. And in order to know, we first have to get the definitions of solvent and solute. So just to put it plainly, solutions involve two types of molecules or two types of compounds. One of them are going to be considered solvents because they are the ones that will have the capability to dissolve things, dissolve other things. And solute is the one that's being broken down. That's the one that's being dissolved. So the most classic case is you could have water and salt, NaCl. So the water will be the solvent and NaCl will be the solute. And as you know, typically the solvent is going to be in a much greater concentration, much greater amount will have the solvent compared to the solute. And so what would happen is the solvent has the capability to break down the sodium chlorine bond, which is why it would be called the sol solute, because it's being dissolved whereas the solvent does the dissolving. Now let's talk a little bit about properties of water that make it a solvent. What really makes a solvent? So water is considered a universal solvent. And this just simply means that it has these um, quote unquote magical powers to be able to dissolve uh, a variety of substances. And that is primarily due to two factors, one of them being polarity, and the other being hydrogen bonds or the ability to form hydrogen bonds. So if we take a look at the oxygen molecule here, it is connected by covalent bonds. So the hydrogens are connected to the oxygen with the covalent bonds. Now these covalent bonds are Covalent bonds, by definition, do sharing of electrons. However, this sharing is unequal because oxygen has a greater electronegativity. So then oxygen is going to form a slightly negative charge because its electrons that it's sharing are going to be pulled closer to the oxygen. So we'll have a slight negative. And both hydrogens will have a slight positive charge because their own electrons are being pulled away closer to the oxygen. They're still being shared, however, they're not shared equally, so there's an imbalance. Whenever we have an imbalance, it creates polarity. To find out more about polarity and electronegativity, watch a video that I have linked here, which would be lecture 4.2 on chemistry where I talk more about polarity and electronegativity in much greater detail. And now if we have multiple water molecules together, as we would in a regular cup of water, as you can see, we would form plenty of hydrogen bonds between them. And so these hydrogen bonds are the ones that will be responsible for the majority of breaking down and dissolving. And this is why water is such a good universal solvent. All of these bonds that I have highlighted with red dots, these are all formed due to hydrogen bonds. And remember, hydrogen bonds are between fawn atoms, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. So here we got the oxygen bonded to hydrogen, and therefore they would be forming plenty of hydrogen bonds. Now, alone they're weak. Hydrogen bonds are very weak. However, um, when there's a lot of them and water would have a whole lot of hydrogen bonds, they become extremely strong. And so because of these two properties, they're able to break down something like sodium chloride very easily. And I'm going to show you an example of that later on in this lecture. Now let's talk about how solubility works. Generally speaking, you're going to be asked questions about uh, does this dissolve this or is this uh, solute going to be dissolved in this solvent and essentially what it's asking is for you to determine the polarity of both substances the solute and the solvent and then you will be able to tell whether dissolving and and uh, a solution will occur so uh, let's talk about how this works well what dissolves what um Typically, the general saying is that like dissolves like. 
This is a classic saying, and what it really means is that polar dissolves polar, and nonpolar substances dissolve nonpolar substances. So if you have a polar sol vent, it will dissolve a polar solute. If you have a nonpolar solvent, it will only dissolve an, a nonpolar solute. Now water is polar, as we have seen, and sodium chloride is a ionic bond, and ionic bonds by nature are gonna be polar because they have real charges, and when that happens, it, it forms ions. So it easily dissolves. However, something that has, uh, for example, chlorine gas, where there's no polarity, it will not dissolve in something like water, or um, even carbohydrates, something like methane. Methane is a nonpolar substance and it's not going to dissolve in water. However, there are nonpolar substances that are able to dissolve uh, something like methane. So let's first discuss how polar dissolves polar. So I use the classic example of water being the solvent, the polar solvent dissolving sodium chloride, which is a polar solute. And in this case, the sodium and the chlorine are gonna break their bond inside the water. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna form ions. And that is due to the hydrogen bonds and polarity of the water. And as you can see, the oxygens, partially uh, negatively charged oxygens, are gonna clump around the positive sodium, whereas the partially positively charged hydrogens are gonna clump around negatively charged chlorine. And this is exactly how they would separate and break those bonds between sodium and chlorine. And they will simply form their ions, which means this has been dissolved. Now, in terms of nonpolar dissolving nonpolar, there's going to be no breakage of bonds. So essentially, if we have a longer chain of uh, carbohydrates, for example, right, so this is a pentane, and this, this pentane, these molecules of pentane, are never going to break their, their bonds in between the carbon and hydrogen or the bonds between these, um, the, the carbons together. So essentially what is going to happen is these molecules are simply going to disperse. So if this is our solute, I could add some sort of polar solvent that will simply go around the molecules and they're just gonna mix very nicely. So it, it's kind of like mixing vegetable oil and mixing olive oil. Th they're just gonna mix together and they will nicely disperse between each other. Uh, whereas if you were to mix it with water, the oil is gonna make hydrophobic interactions and it's then going to clump up. However, here, as you can see, the white being the solvent is going to separate the individual molecules of the solute. Uh, however, it's never going to break its bonds. That's really the only difference with the nonpolar um, to nonpolar dissolution uh, compared to the polar and polar where the bonds are actually going to be broken. So this is a bit of a summary. All you really need to know is like dissolves like, and you will be able to solve many, many problems by being able to identify if they're polar or nonpolar. So that's the key here. Determine if the compound is polar and see if your solvent and solute are polar, they will dissolve. If your solvent and solute are nonpolar, they will dissolve. But if they do not match, they will not dissolve. And that's how you solve those questions. So it's a very simple concept. So this concludes our lecture for today. In the next video, we are going to discuss the concentration of solutions and how to express those, as well as the concept of equilibrium.